It can be seen that the Nevada Del Rue's eruption of 1985 is one of the deadliest eruptions of recent history. The eruption happened in the dead of night resulting in killing over 22,000 people. It is no wonder why Nevada Del Rue's is active and why it is capable of an eruption like the one of 1985. There are four different plates surrounding the volcano including the South American, the Nazca, the Cocos, and the Caribbean plate. The volcano did not just become active overnight. Nevada Del Rus has been active for well over 150,000 years. The eruption itself happened on November 14, 1985 and put the town of Amero under almost a concrete layer of dirt, ice, and debris. The volcano was not just non-active leading up to this. There were signs of seismic activity but ignored by seismologists. This volcano has proven to be a very dominant source of naturally occurring hazard of the nearby residents, and without proper research and mitigation, we will continue to be a major source of concern. The Impact of Deadly Lahars from Nevada del Ruz, Colombia The Nevada del Ruz volcano is located in the Andes Mountains of South America. Nevada del Ruz is the northmost and highest Colombian volcano with historical activity. With a summit elevation of 5,389 meters, the volcano is covered with 25 square kilometers of snow and ice, even though it is located only 500 kilometers from the Earth's equator. Beginning in November 1984, the volcano began showing clear signs of unrest, including earthquakes, increased fluomeric activity from the summit crater, and small phytic explosions. An explosive eruption from the Ruse's summit crater on November 13, 1985 at 9.08 p.m. generated an eruption column and sent a series of pyroclastic flows and surges across the volcano's broad ice-covered summit. Within minutes, pumic and ash began to fall on the northeast along with heavy rain that had started earlier in the day. The crater was enlarged slightly by the eruption, and the summit area was quickly covered with layers of pyroclastic flow deposits as thick as 8 meters. This eruption was preceded by a strong phreatic explosion from the crater at 3.05 p.m. In this view of the crater, the dark pyroclastic flow deposits are partly covered with fresh snow. Hot rock fragments of the pyroclastic flows and surges quickly eroded and mixed with the Ruse's snow and ice, melting about 10% of the volcano's ice cover. In places, channels 100 meters wide and 2 to 4 meters deep were eroded into the ice cap. Flowing mixtures of water, ice, pumic, and other rock debris then poured from the summit and sides of the volcano into the rivers draining the volcano. In one river, scientists found a piece of ice two meters across, about three kilometers from the crater. Pumic and meltwater produced by the hot pyroclastic flows and surges swept into the gullies and channels on the slopes of the Ruse as a series of small lahars. After descending several thousand meters and eroding loose rock debris from the sides of the volcano, the lahars were funneled into all six major river valleys leading from the Ruse. Here in headwaters of the Gali River, on the north side of the Ruse, a lahar took several paths on its journey downstream. Flowing downstream from the Ruse at an average speed of 60 km per hour, lahars eroded soil, loose rock debris, and stripped vegetation from the river channels. By incorporating water and debris from along the river channels, the lahars grew in size as they moved away from the volcano. Some lahars increased up to four times their initial volumes. In some of the narrow canyons downstream from the volcano, as shown here in the Gully River, lahars were as thick as 50 meters. Houses and towns located high enough above the river channels escaped damage from the lahars. In the Gully River Valley, at least two lahar pulses were reported by eyewitness, separated by 5 to 15 minutes depending on the distance from the volcano. Eyewitness reported that the noise created by the passage of each pulse made their houses and grounds shake. Within four hours of the beginning of the eruption, Lahars had traveled 100 kilometers and left behind a wake of destruction. More than 23,000 people were killed and about 5,000 were injured. More than 5,000 homes were destroyed along the Chinchilla, Gali, and Lagnulias rivers. Hardest hit was the town of Armarillo at the mouth of the Rio Lagnulias Canyon which was located at the center of this photograph. Three quarters of its 28,700 inhabitants perished.
Accounts from survivors indicate Armero was inundated with several pulses of flowing material. The first arrived at 11.25 p.m. and consisted of a flood of cold, relatively clean water that overflowed the Rio Lagolinias Channel, sweeping into downtown Armero. Only a few centimeters deep in town, this water was from a lake located just upstream and had been displaced when Lahars entered the lake. The second pulse arrived at 11.35 p.m. This was the largest pulse, and within 10 to 20 minutes destroyed most of the buildings and swept away most of the people in Armero. Flow depths of the Lahar ranged from 2 to 5 meters. The third pulse arrived at 11.50 p.m with a velocity of about half of the second one. Then in the next hour or so, a series of smaller pulses was experienced by survivors trapped in the mud. These pulses lifted people floating in the mud and pushed them a few meters ahead. One last pulse struck Armero a short time after at 1 a.m. on November 14th. Based on the information known about the Nevada del Ruz eruption of 1985, Information pertaining to the tectonic setting, characteristics of the volcanic eruption, and effects of the eruption on nature and humans can all be used to further a knowledge of eruptions of this type. This information can also improve risk assessment which will then help scientists present recommendations to help mitigate the hazard which affects the region of Colombia. Not only will this provide a better understanding of all volcanic hazards in general, but this information will also provide the basis for predicting when and where natural hazards of this type will occur in the future, and maybe even ensure that everyone of all regions will be able to avoid the majority of possible tragedies caused by volcanic eruptions.